I'm uh, here at EHA in Amsterdam in 2019 and I'm talking to AML Global Portal uh, about the work we're presenting at this meeting regarding MRD status before stem cell transplant. So patients who have a stem cell transplant for AML and then relapse have a very, very poor outcome with fewer than 20% of patients then achieving long-term survival. So there's a lot of interest in trying to identify patients who are at high risk of relapse after transplant in order that we can try and intervene um, and uh, do something either before or during the transplant to try and improve their survival rates. And there's been a lot of studies over the past few years looking at MRD um, pre-transplant and when that's measured by flow cytometry, which is one of the uh, most common ways of measuring MRD, um, patients who, are, who test positive before their transplant have an extremely high relapse risk. Now, one of the uh, other ways of measuring MRD that we're very interested in is using PCR. And uh, we studied uh, 107 patients in the UK AML17 trial and looked at their MRD status by PCR prior to transplant. And the reason this is important is because PCR tests are much, much more sensitive than flow MRD tests. And so we wanted to see if we could uh, define patients who were at high risk of relapse using PCR techniques. What we found was that there is a group of patients who are MRD positive but have levels below some thresholds that we've defined that actually have a very good outcome prior to transplant. So those patients don't necessarily need any interventions. On the other hand, we found a group of patients who have high levels of MRD um, and patients with flip 3 mutations with any level of MRD who have an extremely poor outcome after transplant with actually 17% survival at two years after transplant. So our study um, has defined this population that are extremely high risk of relapse and we can then go on to test interventions that will hopefully reduce the risk of them relapsing going forwards.